Hi, I'm Scott Land, and thank you for buying the kit to create your own juggling marionette. It'll come in a box like this, and once you open the box, you're going to find this incredible bag that comes with it, and this is a dust cover. This covers your mar marionette when you're finished with the character. And inside the bag, you're going to have the head, comes with the string. And what's interesting about this particular head is that it's different from what you saw on my marionette, is that the face doesn't have any animation. Mine has the moving eyes and the eyebrows and the a jaw. This one does not, but it does all the other skills, such as juggling the balls, balancing them on the nose and on the foot, and then at the very end of the act, you can actually perform the pants drop. That is all in your marionette. Then we have the body. There's a front and the back. We'll address that when you go to put the character together. We have the legs. There's a left and a right. We've got the arms with the hands, left and right as well. We got the two juggling balls. Perfect. We have the controller. Then you have the neck, which is made up of two balls. That's for the neck that goes underneath the head. The costume. Excellent. And then to hold the legs on, there is a rod that comes with it. That slips right in here. You'll see that when we go to put the pieces together. Then we have the small little bag that has the felt for the bottom of the feet, the string to string the marionette, and then we have chamois for both the shoulders and on the hips to hold the legs together. We have the wig for your character. And then it comes with a checklist with all the character pieces. So you'll see everything that comes involved in the actual marionette to putting it together. Comes with that as well. And again, we come with this beautiful case, or this bag that'll hold your marionette so that it protects it from the dust. And those are all the pieces. And now I want to introduce you to Lisa. She's going to show you how to paint your marionette. Hi, I'm Lisa Land, Scott's Better Half, and I'm going to show you how to paint your juggler today. Your puppets come primed and ready to paint, and you'll get a head. You'll have two balls for the juggling aspect of your puppet. You have neck balls for your puppet. You have two legs with feet attached, and you have two arms. I have another one off camera being painted right now. So... We also, because we know that you might not be a professional artist at home, we found some great things on Amazon. It comes on your list, but you can also get these things uh, via the links below. We have a paintbrush kit, an artist quality uh, acrylic paint set, which is phenomenal, and a little Masterson Stay Wet palette, which is really great. I have my paints on it. We also have some things around the house that you're going to need. And you can find those on your list that we have included. We have um, a wa some water to wash your brushes in. We have a nice little towel to keep your brushes nice and clean while you're, do while you're using them. I'm going to go ahead and start painting. We keep it really simple. So we're going to paint two base coats of a lighter color portrait pink and then we're going to let that dry a bit and then we're going to do a nice wash and stipple effect with the burnt umber in your kit because that's going to give a really good um, lovely skin tone just really nice and you can tell his little eyes they look at the little balls when they're juggling they're amazing and they just really cute they emphasize the little laugh lines around the eyes 
Now you can paint this guy any color you want, fantasy, reality, you name it. This is your baby. And you get a nice little um, jolt when you do it because you painted it yourself. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to start with the portrait pink. And for you guys, I'm going to tell you how to make your own portrait pink. And that's going to be the crimson in your kit along with the yellow ochre in your kit and the white in your kit. You can mix those in pretty equal parts or you can add more white in. Um, I have it already mixed on my palette for ease today. So what we're going to do is put a little water on our brush, put it into the light pink, and get a nice coat on your head. Do not try to cover every surface because you're going to get that on the second coat. And what we're using is the Tin Qualrite Glaze Brush from your kit. It's a nice little size and it gets all in the cracks and crevices and we get that all completed. Okay, so here's the head and for the magic of TV we have it emphasized right here. I've got a little glaze on that. We're going to put more glaze on it. So we're going to take your number 11 Qualrite Filbert brush and the number 10 glaze brush that you just used to paint your two base coats, your two thin base coats, mind you. And make sure your tin glaze is pretty dry. So we're going to just get all the water off of that because you're going to use both of these brushes to create that glaze. So take your 11 filbert, dip it in your water, dip it in your burnt umber on your palette, and start glazing. Do not let this dry. Work with the other brush, your number 10 glaze, and kind of just stipple around a little bit. Switch water, a little more glaze. So you're working in little sections here and it's really, really messy and fun. So have fun with it. <laughs> I do. Any big um, dark areas you want to kind of pat down. And if you notice I'm taking the paint off of the brush with my towel here. We have a great coat there. That's a really good coat. So what you might want to do is let this dry for another 15 minutes. And if you don't um, like the color that you have, you want it darker or lighter, you can, you can go either way. But you can take, to, d to darken it, just put another coat of burnt umber on and do exactly what we did. It's it's a wash, it's easy. And to lighten it, just take your number 10 glaze brush, get it really, really dry, put it back into your light portrait pink, and you can lighten up areas, like on the nose, and just kind of stipple it on there. Sometimes I even use my fingers, because that's the best tool, I think, is to a little finger, it's really good, okay? So through the magic of television, once again, I already have my glaze coat on my head. So we're going to paint some details. This is really simple and this is where you're going to shine as the artist. Remember, when you're working this puppet, you're probably going to be quite a ways away from people, possibly on stage, and everything needs to be pretty exaggerated. So we're going to take a number two round from your kit. We're going to dip it in your paint, excuse me, dip it in your water, dip it into your black, get it really nice and liquidy, and use your, use your little pinky as you're painting and just make a nice line of dark black in the eye. 
if it mine's a little too watery let it dry and go back over it again with another coat of black I'm gonna do the same thing with this eye super simple super simple While those are drying, I normally like to work from, from top to bottom, but you know what? Today we're going to switch things up a little bit. We're going to take our number two pencil and we're going to draw an upper lip on your juggler. He's such a cute little happy guy. I want his little lip, I want his little um, lips to turn upward, the corners of his lips. So I put a little upward sweep. And what I like to do is take the number, um, oh, not that one, we're going to take the number four round, which is a little bit larger than your two round that you used for the eyes, and we're going to mix some crimson, some burnt umber, and your yellow ochre along with some white. And I've made a pretty good lip color. You don't want it too red, you, want, you don't want it too yellow, and you definitely don't want it too brown. You won't, see, you won't see it. It won't be as nice from far away. So what I've got is a really nice, um, beautiful little red toned color here for the lips. And I'm going to use Again, use your pinky. And again, I think that's too light. You know what? Throw some red in there. It's all about experimenting and having fun. And yes, that was too light. This is much nicer. I'm going to turn up the little, the little thing. There, yeah, there we go. And we're going to do the bottom lip. And again, you don't even have to draw a top lip if you don't want to. That's up to you. So one coat of that, and that's all you need right now. Let it dry. That's my mantra. Let it dry. Anybody who's taken a class at Scott Land School knows that. And we're going to go back using our number two round. And we're going to dip into the black. And if you want to, you can lighten it up with a little bit of the, of the burnt umber. It doesn't have to be black black. And we're going to draw in some eyebrows. I kind of want, I, you know, I want his eyebrows, I think, to be like almost a unibrow. <laughs> and so I'm going to draw kind of a unibrow and make it fuzzy. Because that's kind of funny, a unibrow. And then just dab your brush on there. Notice how I'm using my pinky on the nose, too steady my hand and then we're gonna just dab a little on there and I want some more unibrow so I'm gonna just pop some little color lightly right there so it looks like he has a unibrow it's kind of cute huh 